Georgia Backroads is all about Georgia. Georgia history, nature, travel, and lifestyles. So you'd think that our cover photos would be Georgia photos. But our most recent cover photo from Georgia was the summer 2021 issue, shown here. Why? That's what I'm here to explain. And I'll also share with you what we've selected for the spring 2023 issue and why. Why didn't we have any Georgia photos on our covers in 2022? Partly by chance, partly by choice, and partly under duress. Between 2008 and 2019, about half of the magazine's cover photos came from a single source, Georgia Archives. Here are some samples. Sometime around 2018 or 2019, the University of Georgia took over the operation of Georgia Archives. In 2019, UGA implemented a policy that photos from its Georgia Archives collection could not be altered in any way. This was probably meant to prevent people from colorizing historic old photos in ways that might be questionable. We never alter photos or colorized photos, but we did add tint since purely black and white photos wouldn't look good on a cover. Here's an example of a photograph that's black and white that we tinted made it a sepia tone in order to fit or use on our cover. We appealed this new rule asking Georgia Archives for permission to continue doing things as we always had by applying tint, but we were turned down. That eliminated the single largest source of Georgia Backroads cover photos. Cover photos and covers should be artistic and beautiful, appealing. They should pertain to a story in the magazine, preferably a major story, as did this photo of Bethany Stevens. Preferably, cover photos should not be busy and should have a strong vertical composition, but sometimes with cropping, busy and horizontal photos will work, as happened here with this Library of Congress photo of a Georgia textile mill. With Georgia Archives photos no longer available for covers, most of our cover photos since 2019 have come from the Library of Congress or private collections. In 2022, by sheer chance, each cover photo came from outside Georgia. For the spring issue, we chose a picture of photographer Marion Post Walcott taken in Maine. For summer, we used a painting of Vice President Aaron Burr to illustrate an article about the time he spent in Georgia. For autumn, it was a photograph of actor Oscar Wilde taken at a studio in New York City in the 1880s just before Wilde came to Georgia to perform. And for winter, we chose a photo of a streetcar operator in Washington, D.C., because we couldn't find a good vertical photo pertaining to streetcars in Georgia. Cliff Johnson has designed the magazine since 2004. A freelance graphic designer based in Roswell, Cliff is very experienced and has sound judgment and good taste. He has been largely responsible for choosing and designing each cover for 19 years. Some of his most memorable covers are shown here. This photo of two women playing banjos was chosen for the autumn 2012 issue of the magazine. You can see the work that Cliff did to cover or correct some of the imperfections and other issues with that photograph. As he nears completion of the design of a new issue of the magazine, Cliff generally sends me five or six cover candidates, sometimes more, occasionally less, and rarely there are no good candidates, which is when we have to scramble to make something work. For the spring 2023 issue, 
Cliff sent an email with seven cover possibilities on the evening of February 1, 2023. And here they are. Here's a photograph of a barefoot man on a porch in a large hat looking down. A photo of a woman on a faded antebellum plantation house porch. Large majority of the photo is in shadow backlit. A wagon loaded with sacks used as an opening photo in the article accompanying this issue. A turpentine worker prepping a tree. A couple of men standing around a street pole truck in background. A male youth, no face showing, posing with a sack of boll weevils. And a surprise candidate that Cliff found from a story about the Glencoe Naval Air Station where blimps were based in World War II to patrol the coastline. However, we had to eliminate that surprise candidate because the photo was from the Georgia Archives collection and therefore we could not use it on the cover. Of the remaining six photos, I ranked them in this order. Six was the turpentine worker. Five was the men on the street. Number four was the young man with the boll weevil sack. Number three was the photo of the woman standing on the faded antebellum porch. Number two was the woman by the wagon. And the first was the photograph of the man wearing the large hat. The photo was taken by Dorothea Lang in 1937. She identified the man behind the hat as a turpentine worker in DuPont, Georgia. The next day, Cliff came back to me with two versions of a cover with the man in the hat. The first with the magazine logo behind the hat and the second with the logo in front of the hat. I ran these by co-workers and trusted family and friends. Everybody liked both options with the vote close, but favoring the logo behind hat candidate. So that's what we went with. So here it is, the cover of the spring 2023 issue of Georgia Backroads magazine. It's our first cover with a photo from Georgia since 2021, and now you know why. Georgia Backroads isn't sold on newsstands, it's available only by subscription. So if you'd like to have the complete issue, you can subscribe by visiting our website, georgiabackroads.com, or by calling us at 1-800-547-1625. Thank you for watching.